And shalom, everyone. Shalom. I want to welcome everyone to King James Bible University Precept Mastery. I want to welcome each and every one of you guys over here to, to this study. This is a um, pretty serious study we're going to be going through today. It's a lecture, more set up format. And also, most of you guys, if you um, you now can go over to King James Bible University, as we've been showing, you can go to kjbu.org and go over to the live section. You can click there and you can actually access the same thing, see the same chat as you normally see. But you just won't get all the other things around you where these advertising other things to you. So you're more than welcome to go there to where you can see what's going on, but then where you can learn and focus on what you need to. And today we we be looking at something that's pretty serious, pretty serious. And we'll find out if we need to dig even more into this to understand what's going on. Because this here is one of the most driven things that people have lied about to you in churches, in person, in seminars, in other places alike. This is the purpose that is driven in your life. They give you all these false realities on what you was actually put here to do. So we want to look at that. We want to understand a lot of what's going on and how this actually works out for many of you guys. So just to sit there to see, and I want to sit there and understand a little bit more. And just to do a little bit of a check, do anybody know what is their purpose here in life? And if you know, just put yes. If not, just put no. Do you know the purpose of your life why it's here? Do you know that? And that's just a yes or no. We don't need no long, draw it out, saying anything else. It's just a yes or no. So we're going to let people put these things out and see what happens. So just give it a second. We'll see. And as we going on, we seeing what's happening here. Um, we have some people, yes. We have some people, no. It's highly, highly interesting. Highly, highly interesting. On the people, the yeses and the noes. That's pretty interesting. We're getting a pretty good mix result here. And I'm going to sit there. I'm going to see if I can do something real quick. Let me see. And I'm going to sit there to see um, I'm trying to sit there. I need to be able to add your own opinion. And I don't see where I can do that. That's what I'm trying to do currently. Let's do this. And uh, let's do this. We're going to do this here. We're going to put this up here. I'm putting that up there for a reason, and I want to sit there and see. <clears throat> We're having yeses and noes, and I'm putting this up there right there. And we, we're going to see what is going on here. 
And right now we only have four people, so I'm going to let this go for a minute. Because we really want to understand how this actually works out. And how this looks. And how this actually looks. Because this is actually what it's saying. It's very serious on what we're asking. And what I'm asking of you is very serious. And to know what's required of you is very serious. To know what is required of you. So we're just going to let it go for a minute. And then we're going to start um, start going through it. But I'm going to answer this question right after I end the poll. I'm going to answer the question. And we have some people... Putting it in the if you're putting it in the chat where you can put it right here, it's a simpler way. We have right now we're gonna let it go about another 30 seconds before we end this poll here. We're gonna let it go for about another 30 seconds until we're gonna go through it. And I appreciate that, Deacon Emmanuel, because it is no such thing as Shalom. That's the craziest thing that they say, but that is camp doctrine which is actually is a form of pig Latin something that was created by some men so we're still waiting on this here and let's see here Still having people putting this in there. So we're getting ready to end the poll. We're getting ready to end this poll here. And we're going to look at that. You see in the poll it has live for God and we have some proved worthy. And I don't know, it's 12%. This is a very interesting poll kind of shocked to even see it that it's this way because the thing is once you look at it is um, I don't know is a very good answer I don't know is an extremely good answer um, to prove worthy we didn't define it but that's a very extremely good answer people who just not putting them in there I can care less they People try to do that after they done did it. We can care less after that. But people, now they all of a sudden they want to come up with these. Oh, yeah, this is what, no. <laughs> the poll is over. So if anybody else start putting in some answers, uh, Deacon Emmanuel just and the other people, just make sure you delete them because it's a waste of time at that point. But the same thing is um, if you're living for God, now is your key or something you should have known completely on what you were supposed to be living for. What you should, you should have known completely what you was living for and what is you, what is required from you. If you living for God and that one's there and you have 51% of the people saying, yeah, they know, we're going to go through some things and we're going to find out exactly what's going on here. And, the main part of this we want to understand is this. We don't want to come up with our own theologies. We don't want to come up with our own ways and what we believe is it. That's why I say prove worthy. We don't know what we're up against, but I want to prove myself worthy on what's going to come in front of me. That's a good answer. I don't know what I'm getting ready to come up against. That's a good answer. Live for God. Not a good answer. Not a good answer. Because you don't know what you're living for. You don't know what the purpose is. That's the purpose of what, what we're here for. And this is the whole thing we need to do 
in all things. This is what we need to make sure we go through as we do this. So what I want to do is get you to understand a few things as we go through it. And as we want to understand something, we need to really perfectly understand a few things here with this. And we have a difference between purpose and we have another one, which is passion. We have purpose and we have passion. And these is two very peculiar things we have to really pay attention to. We have to pay close attention to. The reason why is purpose and passion, which is which? Which is which? How often do you encounter something that you or another person can figure out what is a purpose or a passion? See, a passion can be seen as blood sucking. I'm going to explain that because it's actually in scripture itself. We got to understand blood sucking is part of passion. It can either be a spoken or in a written form and often it can be used to find yourself questioning whether or not you or another person intend to do something positively. I want you to remember and really closely understand what I'm saying because it's a purpose for everything. And we have to understand what the purpose is. What it is. And how often you find yourself questioning these things. You can think into where you can do things and you stigmatize a, a phrase as blood suckers. See, people who is driven by passion, people who are driven by passion, are seen as bloodsuckers. They have this, this inner satisf satisfying appetite for greed. You're going to find that out. A person that fits this description would be starving with this unquenchable thirst. They're going to have this unquenchable thirst for money, power, fame. And the objective is characterized by such a person as a predator that derives from its existence from another individual. They're not getting it on themselves. They're getting it from another individual that distinguishes them as a bloodsucker. Or you can call them a human leech. They can be seen as both. But it all depends on how you view the access to the one that wants the purpose. See, a person who is greedy is a self-centered person. A greedy person is a self-centered person. They look to take advantage of the person that is weaker and more susceptible, which is known as a human leech. A human leech. On the other hand, the, you have people who are just straight out, just arrogant, self-centered. They're drained life forces from someone that is weaker, more susceptible. These are called the bloodsuckers. People has already used these meanings and they use to achieve their passion in which they're stealing from others, taking from what they want. See, one definition is mainly to satisfy their greed. They are not interested in cooperating with other people. The only thing they're interested in is accumulating much wealth and material goods as possible that demonstrates the insatisfiable thirst for greed. Many individuals can accomplish this thing when they set out to do these things in life. And this fueled by passion, not purpose. It's fueled by passion, not purpose. So we must remember greed, greed is an emotion. Think about these. And it results more to a problem, which people who take chances because they have this insatisfiable nature and it makes that individual too confident in their capabilities, which will result into these dangerous outcomes. One of the best examples you can even see this. You can see somebody who uh, look at a job that are paid, say, $350,000 a year. 
the outcome can be disastrous <clears throat> because they don't have the skills. They need the skills, the knowledge, the experience, and understanding of other business, but you don't have it. That's going to be your ruin. But you want the job. So many people have these passions. These passions are inflamed emotions. And as an individual, as I said, as it has this insatisfiable thirst for greed, money, power, or fame. They like a human leech and they don't have enthusiasm for anything else but that. Whatever way the winds blow, that's the way they blow. So what is the difference between passion and purpose? This is why I say some people sit there and they're hold on clear, saying I know what I want and I want what I have. And they actually was human leeches and not knowing there was after a passion and not a purpose. So we have to look at this as a little bit closer. We're going to start here. We're going to see something as we know, and you need to make sure you're writing this down because this is going to be very important in your life studies. Not important in the study, very important in your life studies. It says this here in Proverbs chapter 30, and it speaks on this in verse 15. It says a horse leech have two daughters. A horse leech. This is what is telling you right what it is. It's a blood sucking person has two daughters, two houses, two lineages. But it goes on more and it says crying Give, give. Give, give. We must remember of greed and what, because of what might be a passion, money, power, and fame, they can never be satisfied. But it's here. And it says, there are three things that never satisfy ye. Four things say not is enough. This is why it's so important. Because a lot of us are going to find out that we are personally leeches. We're going to find out a lot of us are just blood suckers and not seeking the purpose of God. Arrogance is what kicks in. Arrogance is a very important thing that we need to really pay attention to. It says this in Habakkuk chapter 2, but we're going to look at something in verse 5. And it tells us a little bit more where we're going to start digging in some a lot of this. It says, O ye, because he transgresses by wine, he is proud, he is a proud man, neither keepeth a home who enlarges his desires as hell, including is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heap unto him all people. Hmm. It's saying a lot. But you transgress it, meaning you violate, you're forgetting. But then there's wine is the faith because you're mainly seeking your own and not the thing of God. So you're going to be proud about it, haughty, arrogant, bolsters. That's what this is telling you. Right up front. Transgress by wine cannot be satisfied. As one keep not his home. But he going to seek to large, enlarge his desires. This is all you're doing. Because some of us are mixed up purpose for passion. Purpose for passion. says this here in, in, in Isaiah. Something real real strange in Isaiah chapter uh, 5 verse 14. Only one other thing enlarges herself and it tells us here. It says, Therefore hell have enlarged herself to open her mouth without measure in their glory, in their multitude, in their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. The pomp ones, the haughty ones, their glory is going there. It's going there.
we have to understand something and understand why pride and passion for money, power, fame, this is the same as death that cannot be satisfied. You can't satisfy death. People die every day. And death still looking for more people. Death cannot be satisfied. I want you to think about that. It comes a time to everybody going to be satisfied to a point. Death continually seeks more. Because it can't be satisfied. It says this here in, um, in Psalms. We're going to see something in Psalms chapter uh, 22, but verse 26. And this is one of our biggest problems. It says the meek shall eat and be satisfied. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. The humble and the lonely going to learn and they're going to be satisfied. They're going to be appeased. They shall praise the spirit of God that they seek him. Your heart shall be, shall live forever. So I'm going to say it again. Ask the question as we going down. We ain't even got to the main nitty gritty parts yet. We haven't gotten to the main parts of this, but many people teach us on this here. And they teach you that everybody, as long as you have a belief, that somebody did something, somebody else did something, you're good. It's not true. But you have a lot of people who are so proud, they think just because they're learning or they're listening, they're good. That's not the truth. You have to study to show yourself approved. One, you have to be humble, meek, be satisfied. You have people who want to Go and have more power than another person. They want to have more knowledge than another person. They want to do these things more than someone else. That's proud. These things we, we have to look at. These things is important. These we have to remember. As we continually go through here, we look at something and we, we understand what is being said. The grave and the barren womb, the earth is not filled with water. The fire that said not, it is enough. Proverbs 30 and 16. The grave, including the barren womb. The earth is not filled with knowledge. The earth is not filled with understanding. And the desire that said not, it is enough. Is it you? See, we, we, we got to get away from these little games that people like to play. This is a problem. A lot of us like to play games. A lot of us like to sit there and think that we can go around and do things and we cool about it. And it's not. And it's not. But why would we do this? We'll sit there and then we think we're even better than other people. Have you ever seen a grave sit there and say they had enough? Bible says this. Let's look at something and we're gonna we're gonna take a closer look at all things. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Bible says this, and let's be real clear on this all together. To everything there is a season, including a time to every purpose under the heaven. Everything. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a season.
we 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 have we have we have a problem here. Everything has a purpose under heaven, has a season. That season is a point in time, it has a length, it has a past, it has a present, it has an afterward. And God said this same thing that is here. It has a season. But what are we going to do about that? Actually, let's go here. I want to take you somewhere. I want you to see something. And let's go up here to 14. And we're going to look at 14. And we got to look at 214. Let me see what let me get to 14. If it will. No. Let me see. If it will let me see. Well, I can hold it. I can get it there, but I can hold it. That's okay. And we're going to look at 14. And we're going to see something what God said about this. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, God said, Let there be light in the firmament in the heaven and divided the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. For days and years. And it's showing us the purpose on what we need to be doing. Showing us what the purpose is what we should be doing. So as we continually move through here. And, and the reason why we, we have to take a personal look at this and very close. The main thing is people think, everybody think, everybody's going somewhere. Mainly to heaven. But everybody's going somewhere. And more so, I'm a more realist than anything. Because we have a lot of people like to play church. And miss the purpose that is driving your life. So this is why I set up in a lecture format. Let's look at something in, in, in Matthew chapter 26. But verse 56 is telling us something here. It says, but all this was done that the scriptures might, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. This here is for a purpose and it's for a reason what's going on. Because this happened where it's fulfilling the scripture and it was written by the prophets because it's serious business. This is not a passion statement. People are seeking horse, a horse leech. They're thinking they're being a blood sucker. They're going to get in on somebody else. But when you have to do something and make sure you go through something and what he does, he plant a seed and that seed is going to be put under pressure in this world and he have to see, is it going to prosper or not? The heaven going to look like iron. The earth is going to be as brass. Actually, let's, 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 let's go through some of this and make sure we all on the same page. And we we'll see this in Galatians chapter six, picking it up at verse five. For every man shall bear his own burden. Every man. M-A-N, that's man or woman, going to bear his own burden. I want you to clearly get it. I want, I want see, the reason I'm taking my, I want this to sink in. I want this to really sink in to where you can clearly see where he's coming from. See, I get it if, if people come over here, just watch people come over here, just listen, people just come over. I get that. But then just say that's all you're coming over for. You're just coming over just to listen. But if you're coming over to know what it takes to get into the kingdom, then act like it. Prove it. 
Not to me, to God. And don't waste our time. Because people who like to listen, people who just want to just pass by, you wasting our time. We don't want people with passion. We want people with purpose. For every man should bear his own burden. But some people, as they saying they're going to be disciples, it's telling you right there, but this was done that the scriptures might, of the, of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then the disciples forsook him. This is interesting. <laughs> this is interesting. So I got a question. As we as we moving down, I want to make sure everybody's okay. <laughs> I want to make sure everybody's okay. As we sitting there saying, every man shall bear his own burden. Can you handle that? Can you handle that? Because it's going to get more serious as we go on. To, as we continually go through here, it's going to get more and more and more serious as we go through here. See, because a lot of people can't do it. That I know, because even when we sit in the back, you can hear even when you talk. These things is just showing you what's going on or how this actually works out. Let's look at something. Right there, it's telling us. In Matthew and in Galatians, every man is going to bear his own burden. His own burden. Meaning he got to bear his own cross, his own suffering unto death for the hope and the expectation on what he's looking to get out of it. And to make sure we understand where we all standing on the same identical page going to tell us something. So we'll find this in Titus chapter 1, picking it up at verse 2. In hope of eternal life, which God cannot lie, promised before the world began. That's the achievement we're trying to get. But it's a purpose for that. It's a purpose for that. Everybody with me on that? See, everybody want eternal life, but it's a purpose for it, to get this. It's a purpose for it. I want to make sure we clearly get this. And you're going to see things going to start happening to us. Certain things is going to start happening to us. We'll drop down to verse 59 over here in Matthew 26. We're going to start seeing some of this and. The same thing is, I want to make sure, are you okay? It says, now the chief priests, these men these who are calling themselves intermediaries between this, including elders in the council, sought false witnesses against salvation. So they're seeking these things against salvation. Salvation is supposed to be in you, and if it's in you, they're going to seek false witnesses against you. To put him to death. To put you to death. They're going to seek false witnesses against you. You're going to be reapproached for the name for the ways of Christ. But some of us are going to rise up. Some of us are going to get boisterous. Some of us are going to talk trash. Some of us are going to get prideful. Some of us are going to flat out deny it. But as I said, what are you willing to do? Because we have to look at the contract and understand the contract and what it entails. And it tells us this a little bit more. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, picking up at verse 2, it says, And thou shalt remember all the way of the Spirit of thy God. So once they start putting you under all this pressure, all, all these things, talking about you, doing all these things, and this can be family members and cousins and husbands and wives and friends and associates, enemies.
they're going to see four witnesses against you. They're going to say that you're crazy. They're going to say that you worshiping something that's not God. What's the purpose? You supposed to remember the way which the spirit of thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to humble thee. See, some of us still, no matter what, we're going to get, oh, you're going to stick your chest out. You're going to get bolstered. He says, vengeance is mine. Why do we get bolsterous? And he's saying vengeance is mine. But he, he put us there to humble us to see what we will do. He says, including to prove thee whether thy, what is in thy heart. What is in your heart? Whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Do we humble ourselves? Do we humble ourselves? Do we remember the way of the Spirit of God? To prove, to establish us, to know what is in our heart. Excuse me. And it's all based on the promise of obedience to his voice no matter what happens. We have to be obedient to the voice. We have to keep his commandments to the end. I know it's getting a little bit tougher. No matter what. And seeing the same thing, people said, that, well, if it's a friend, no, what if it's a mother or a father or a husband or a wife? Or a child. Changes, don't it? Changes, don't it? What if your child tells you, if you sit there and you go that direction, I don't need to see you no more. What if your wife or your husband told you the same thing? What if your mother or father told you the same thing? What would you do? What would you say? These are the things that can go on. In fact, we're going to see a little bit more here to make sure your purpose. We're going to come to that point to where we need to know what's going on. In Acts chapter 1, we're going to look at verse 2 going to find out a few things that is new to us and just make sure we understand it. it says until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen now, I don't normally I tell people kind of what it is but I'm but I'm gonna share it with you today because you need to know what it is and I promise you you will see everybody else start saying it but you know where it came from I'm going to tell you what that Holy Ghost is. Distinctly, straightforward, what it is. Because most people don't know what it is. But I'm going to share with you today. What is the Holy Ghost? It's one simple, simple thing. That Holy Ghost is what it's telling you all the time. Because it's saying through the Holy Ghost, through the separated body, is all it says. Who have given commandments unto the apostles, whom he had chosen. So the separated body is telling you about what these going on. But then you see, he showed himself alive unto these people. He showed what was going on. And after after this, and as it's telling you, after that he, after that he through the body. So it's telling you because of 
his passion of this this thing that went on because his passion was different his passion was a feeling of affection but we're going to see something that went on here we got to find out a little bit more watch how he did this and we're going to see a little bit more how this changed up on him it says whom he has showed himself after his passion after his passion by many infallible proofs by many infallible proofs so through his feelings in in his affection he had infallible proofs these 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 convincing things that he did pertaining to the kingdom of god is telling you that pertaining to the kingdom of god so if it wasn't about him is not a passion of evil for himself because he even died not for himself he was doing work for the kingdom so through his passion to make sure that was he was doing he had many infallible proofs many convincing things that he did seen being seen of them 40 days speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom not pertaining to himself. Not pertaining to himself. It gets better when you see when you see it a little bit more here. Second Thessalonians chapter four. I mean, no, we want first Thessalonians chapter four. And we're gonna look at this at verse two. We have to see what it is. It says, For ye know what commandments we gave you by the creator of salvation. So I can't play with water right now. We have to play with meat. We have to play with meat. But you know the commandments we gave you by the creator of salvation. Through these infallible certain evidences that you would be given salvation of this creator. Saying this. Saying this here. For this is the will of God. Key. Key. Even your sanctification, even your separation, that ye should abstain from fornication. Can we? Fornication comes in many different forms, many different facets, many different ways. But by this purpose, the will of God is staying clear by sanctification. We have to stay clear of that by sanctification, not committing fornication and knowing what is our purpose. We have to know what our purpose is. In fact, he, he says a little bit more here in verse 4. He says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessels in sanctification and honor. Did everybody understand that? Did everybody understand what, he, what Paul just said? He, he's telling you something that is we have to know how to possess our vessels in the separation and honor. We have to understand that. We have to remember these things that, that is straightforward with us. So these things is there. Do everyone who know how to possess his vessel. One, hold on one second, one second.
Okay, sorry about that. So, if you know how to possess your vessel through sanctification, you can keep it from fornication. You can keep it from those things. As long as you know what your purpose is. So, understanding that, every reason that this vessel is not to mingle with works of the flesh. Including any other works of it. Let's go a little bit more. Verse 5. It says, Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. So even in the concupiscence, the warning and, and the covetousness and, and lasciviousness is what it is that makes you a horse leech. This makes you a horse leech. And we'll sit there and we'll want something what somebody else have. But having the same mind as a Gentile, an unbeliever or a heathen, who know not the God of Israel. We have been operating according to the flesh, which our motions is of sin, including they contained in the law, and we did them. That's our problem. The things that's contained in the law, we did. And we continue to do the works in our members and bring forth fruit unto death through concupiscence, through wanting and covetousness, by passion and not by purpose. And passion, not by purpose. This is our problem. In fact, um, we're going to look at it a little bit deeper here. We're going to go into something, Galatians chapter 5, picking it up at verse 26. It says this, and it makes it pretty clear for each and every one of us to understand something even better. It says, let us not be desirous in vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Really interesting. Really is what we do. We should not be <clears throat> seeking these temporal things and provoking one another, but we do it. Somebody would get something and you get upset about it. Why? Somebody will be doing to get a better job, get something better, and you get upset about it. Somebody got a promotion, you get upset about it. Someone got a new car, you get upset about it. Someone bought a house, you get upset about it. Someone has came into some money, you get upset about it. Because you want to be desirous for vainglory. Even provoking one another and envying one another. Completely lost sight of purpose. Completely lose sight of purpose. In Galatians chapter 6, but it says a little bit more when we're looking at verse 3. It says... For providing a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. When you think you something and you are actually nothing, you're dirt. But we keep trying to make dirt glory. We keep trying to make dirt glorified. You're deceiving yourself. 100% deceiving yourself. 
your passion is being a blood sucker because you want to you you came here and you're supposed to be doing something that is purpose but you came here doing something that is your passion you're a blood sucker you're a leech If any man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself because we're nothing. But you think you're something. We're dirt. Glory (laughs) the same way. One of the best examples, one of the best examples and 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 same thing is you put yes it's no big deal either way but I watch how people are gonna be real timid on how they do it. Do anyone watch award shows? Any type of awards, movies, songs, whatever. Do you watch award shows? Yes or no? But watch how many people are gonna lie. Watch how many people are gonna lie. But I just want to see this. See, we gotta remove the 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 falsities. But we're going to see a lot of people going to say they don't watch award shows. A lot of people going to say. A lot of people going to say no. I knew they were going to say no. I knew, I knew that was coming. It's interesting. Highly, highly interesting. So... So many people don't watch award shows and might used to, but people saying no now. And some people might say they, they do. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a good answer. Used to no more. Get it. Get it. Got it. And the reason why I'm putting that up there and I want people to see this. Because if you ever look how they glory, and this is why that's so important on what you see here. For if any man think to be something when he is nothing, the same thing I want you to put in your mind. I want you to put in your mind the ones who watch the award shows. The ones who didn't, they shouldn't say anything because they don't watch them. In the ones who see this, who is the first person sometime they think, or after they don't think so many other people, then they thank God. So when they thank God along with the persons that they thank it, they, they equaling them people to God. I want to thank God. I want to thank my manager. I want to thank this person. I want to thank this one. I want to thank that person. I want to thank this person. Or they say, I want to thank my, my team. I want to thank this person. I want to thank that person. And I also want to thank God. Have you ever heard that? The ones who watched it. Have you ever heard that? I guarantee you, you're going to see this. Yes. You're going to see a bunch of yeses come up. The ones who seen the shows. They, this is what they do. And when they do that, they rank in God with everybody else. God is ranked along with everybody else. And we got people who said they didn't see it. Now they saying they see it because now they putting yes. That don't make sense. Don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. People who said they didn't watch a war show, now all of a sudden, now they watch a war show. I don't get it. But anyway, that's who they're thinking. They're putting, they ranking themselves, they ranking their people, they ranking their team, they ranking all these people along with God. They have the same weight, the same fame, the same everything is God. That's what they're doing. And when they think themselves something, when he is nothing, he deceiving himself. Those are war shows. You deceiving one another. In a war shows alone. Think about that. Think about that. The glory in them. Let's let's go a little bit closer on this. Let's go a little bit closer on this. In verse four, it says. But let every man prove his own work, including he shall be, he shall have rejoicing in himself, in himself alone. 
he going to rejoice in himself alone. Think about that. He should rejoice in himself. And the reason you can even see this, you can even see people do it. And most people probably recall this. You see, you had one guy, he, he, he makes movies. And he decided to give this church a million, some of, a sum of a million dollars. As he proceeded to give this man a million dollars, the man who runs that church decided to give him the platform to actually tell everybody about it. And he proceeded to tell everybody about 